Hi, my name is Elizabeth McDaniel, and this is a presentation on the Horned Lizard Conservation Society for a Bio 505 Comprehensive Overview of Phylogenetics and Ecology with Professor Kuchiner. This adorable little guy is Phrynosoma cornutus, the Texas horned lizard, affectionately called the horny toad here in Texas. Uh, there's a really interesting story about how this species became endangered or even why people started looking at it. Basically in the 1950s, uh, these things were everywhere. They were all over Texas and kids were playing with them all the time. And they were even collected and sold and traded for money. And sometime in the 1960s, uh, people noticed that they were disappearing. They just didn't see their beloved little horny toads anymore. <clears throat> and so by 1967, uh, just the regular people made enough of a stink about the fact that these lizards were disappearing that they became a protected species in Texas. They also have many predators. So they're eaten by canids, hawks, snakes, and cats. <laughs> and they only have one primary food source, which is the harvester ant, which has uh, long since become less available to them due to the invasive species of fire ants and the fact that humans are using pesticides to kill the invasive fire ants. So this is a range map here in Texas of where Phrynosoma species are found, but they're also found in New Mexico, Oklahoma, uh, parts of northern Mexico, and in other states even as far north as Canada. So the purpose of the Texas Horned Lizard Conservation Society is stated right on their website under their mission statement. They are there to study, document, and publicize the value and conservation needs of horned lizards and to promote horned lizard conservation projects and assist with horned lizard management initiative throughout their ranges, which is of course in Texas and as I stated previously, down into northern Mexico and up through Oklahoma and the northern states. They offer grants for research through private and public institutions. They also have public education and outreach for all ages, and they aid in rescue of horned lizards and habitat recovery efforts. So this is the history of the HLCS in 1990. People from Texas, Arizona, and California, uh, they met together and discussed their concern about the horned lizard. They eventually recruited people from other states who had smaller populations but still had diminishing horned lizard populations in their states, and they were also concerned. And by the next year, the HLCS was named and chartered. And one year later, they were recognized officially as a nonprofit 501c3. So the procedures and tactics that this organization uses to accomplish its mission are twofold. The first is education and the second is through funding. On the education side, they work toward the bioremediation of native grasses. This is primarily done with private landowners and they educate them on what native grasses are best suited to a good habitat for the species as well as how to eradicate invasive grasses on their land. They also educate the public on safe pesticide use. Of course, the Texas horned lizard primarily eats harvester ants. I think the, the data shows that they eat typically 60 to 70% harvester ants. But the problem is that, especially in Texas, we have an invasive fire ant problem. So the goal is to eradicate invasive fire ants while protecting harvester ants, which can also be negatively affected or killed by the pet same pesticides that are used to kill fire ants. So this requires a watchful eye and special attention to ant species as one is trying to eradicate those invasive ants. Also, some people just don't know that you're not supposed to pick up a horned lizard in Texas. It's illegal, and I believe also in Arizona, New Mexico, and California, uh, they're protected species. So just educating the general public in that way. They also, on their website, have materials like 
activities that we can do and it's really fun. And uh, they have printable worksheets for children so that children can learn about the species. They also visit zoos and museums and hi Ducky <laughs> and educate the public in that manner. And the second side of the coin in their procedures and tactics is research grant funding. The organization does this primarily through private donations. Uh, the first thing they fund is doctoral research. They have funded students at Texas Christian University, Texas State, Oklahoma State. Uh, they also fund public works research. For example, the National Butterfly Center in Mission, Texas has received a grant from them. They also work with various parks and wildlife departments, such as Texas Parks and Wildlife Departments and the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation. Since its inception, this organiz organization has also conducted over 21 field surveys in California and Texas. And what this entails is they examine the area for the possibility of reintroduction of captive species into the wild they also count and document the number of individuals in local populations and the, they do DNA sampling so that they can non-invasively uh, do capture mark recapture on the species. And here are my sources. Thank you.